Hey YouTube, this is Southern Pepper One. I would like to personally thank uh, a bunch of people that are helping me, get, giving me shout outs or you just said good comments. Um, a lot of people. Parlesk, he started it. Uh, uh, Goat Hollow, uh, Mr. Lock and Load, uh, Dangerous Dude 2010, Anyone Find America. There could be others. I, I know people have put little things on their, uh, their personal channels. To direct them my way, I appreciate this. It's it's encouraging when you're you're trying to start something up that people are responding. Uh, it, it makes you want to continue doing it. So, uh, my, be honest with you, my first goal when I started um, was to help people. But numbers wise, I told my wife I wanted to be at a hundred by January first. Uh, then it turned into a thousand, and now. Uh, I, I'm not even looking at the numbers. What I'm trying to do, my next goal is to keep putting out the quality information, the quality videos, and helping people. It doesn't really matter how many I have. The success is going to be measured on uh, if people are responding, saying I'm helping them or they're learning something. That's success in my book. Um, so it's encouraging. I, I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to talk about the uh, the last scenario video, the, the Nightmare of Raw. I enjoy doing these because I can explain things in them and, and there's a lot of things I could show you uh, tactics I could show you equipment supplies but what I'm trying to do which will probably help you more is to get your mind in the right position um, mentally most people haven't even gone through a raw thing the the closest thing that I've come is uh, serious combat um, losing friends uh, brothers that in arms that you know you serve with um, so to me that's that's where I'm drawing a lot from uh, I, I've lost a lot of friends and uh, that's where I'm getting that side of the house I, I've never gone through a raw or no one has um, but that's helping me so my military and my uh, background in survival studying it uh, basically being a, a survivalist practicing what I preach um, Anybody can get on here and say, yeah, you need to stock a year's supply of food. But doing that is another story. Um, getting into the video, I'm going to continue doing these. I'm going to do a scenario video. And then out of that, we'll discuss things on the comment side of the house. So you will figure out what you need to do. You're in charge of the situation just happened. Um, I think that will help. Uh, then we'll, we'll have a bunch of comments. And then we'll, we'll talk about those comments. Because... I don't know the answers. I'll be honest with you. There's th this psychological side of the house, uh, what to do. We, we can we can talk about it, but we really know know what's going to happen until we're in the situation, so we can see the whole situation. Um, the uh, the video I did. We're going to continue doing those, and then what we'll do is we'll uh, train off of them. Because on this one we did, we talked about a lot of things. Um, Newcomers. We had newcomers to our group. What do we do? A lot of good suggestions. A lot of this stuff I'm taking from people that put comments. So I'm not public going to give your name, but you know who you are. You can read the comments. Um, it, it helps me to get all this feedback. It's like 60, 70 other people, you know, using their brains too. All right, newcomers come to your group. What are you going to do? Um, I will tell you from my experience right now with our internal survival group of multiple, multiple families. Um, newcomers would we'd like newcomers to come now and join our group so they can prepare prep and we can teach them and we can learn from each other but there'll be a situation where newcomers come in after the raw has already developed and you're going to be looking for key key people with skill sets that you don't have it might be doctors dentists engineers um, people that have manufactured things they're good with their hands we're looking for those after the after the collapse because we want our community to grow um, we want to be a positive influence in our area um, we want to be we want to create safe zones urban combat survivor has been pushing this the safe zones and I totally agree with that um, by creating the safe zone we extend positive influence in the area that's what we want to do so newcomers newcomers come in let's say you have a newcomer that comes in and he's a bad person. He's spying for someone else to, to find your weaknesses. What do you do with him? I have no idea what we're going to do with him. Uh, could you you take him outside and just execute him? 
I mean, that's an option. Is it the right option? I don't know. How about putting him on trial? Uh, picking people in the community, his peers, having a trial. I mean, that, that seems more on the line of the, uh, the, our way of government and the Constitution than just taking him outside and shooting him. I, I don't know the right answer. Um, definitely some people say interview him. I, that is a great idea. Put, if he's got four people in his family, separate them all, interview them. Have people write notes. Take those notes, compare them. Uh, there could be a legitimate, you know, things aren't jiving. Go back to them. You know, retalk. It could be a simple mistake as one person sees something one way and the other sees it the other way. So don't automatically, hey, there's a discrepancy. These people are bad. No, everybody's human. So uh, things can be explained wrong. So that's newcomers. Key supplies. The antibiotics was very key. Uh, someone died because we did not have the antibiotics. Uh, recommend every family has their own antibiotics. That way, if one family loses their antibiotics, everybody else can easily pick up the slack for them. Um, so distribute those key pieces of equipment or supplies um, so all your eggs are not in one basket. Um, all right, we had the patrol out, and the patrol, we lost communication with the patrol. What do we do? Uh, people said, send out another patrol. Uh, I would definitely not recommend sending out a patrol at night. The reason is, I have extensive knowledge of linking up. A link up is when two friendly forces link up for whatever reason. I've done link ups in uh, training environments hundreds of times in, in, in practice, and then I've done it in real. I think a link up is more, I would rather do uh, hit a hard terrorist target than a link up. A link up is very hard because you, you have to have your security level up, but you also don't want to have a friendly fire incident. And this is doing it with Camo. I would, I would not even think of doing a link up without Camo unless it's been pre-planned pre in, a, in, a, in a situation uh, so you know exactly what you're doing. Uh, a link up, just imagine two groups of people out there with bad guys running around, pitch dark, there's no street lights, there's no nothing, um, you're not going to turn your flashlight on, uh, you have no nods, it's almost impossible to link up because you might be walking towards them and they see you and they don't know who you are. It's pitch dark. They're going by sound of, of boots crushing against leaves. They're going to shoot. You're going to shoot. You're going to have a friendly fire incident. Um, I've seen friendly fire incidents like that in training. Um, we purposely did bad link ups as in no combo. And guess what? You will have a friendly fire incident. I guarantee you. People are scared. Um, we, can, we can say this now, but we're in this nice environment. Everybody's secure. Throw in 60 days of raw, of total fear. There, there's no security in a raw situation. Um, things will be worse. So the patrol thing, the link up thing, I'm gonna definitely do a, do a class, maybe tonight. I'm gonna do a class on linking up. It's very important. Let's say uh, you have two groups that are working together. One could be five miles apart, two good communities. You, you might even know the people in the other communities and you wanna link up to trade. You want to link up because maybe your generator went down and that they have that spare part that they're willing to give you. So you're going to do a link up. You're going to meet at a certain spot. One group will get there first. You, you'll give the sign. They will then give their sign and you're going to link up safely. Um, so that's definitely a class that I, I, I'm hopefully going to work on next. Um, somebody said send the QRF. Um, one thing I'm doing is I'm giving all these acronyms and people don't understand them and that is my fault. I need to stop that. It's just years of being in the military and that's how we talk. Um, QRF, Quick Reactionary Force. It's a force that's designed to react to this, uh, the bad situation. Um, you could send the QRF out if, we, if our patrol came under attack and, and they needed help if we had commo. But sending them out at night, it, it, it's just another problem like the link up. Um, hopefully we learned something. I, I'm, I'm trying to entertain you a little bit. But the entertainment, I'm trying to make you think. Um, hopefully you're thinking. Hopefully you're learning. I'm learning from you guys. So people say, thanks for doing it. No, thank you for commenting. Thank you for sending me stuff back. Because I'm learning. I I'm, I'm actually developing more to use for our group. So I appreciate it. Thanks for watching.